This is Regis Progress and you're tuning into Team School Sports. It's personal between me you and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I just wanted to come get my thoughts on uh, Mean Machine Kavaluskis versus Michael Fox last night. It was on the it was the very last fight on the prelims for the Fundura versus Ocampo undercard, and it was obviously a fight. Of a lot of intrigue here on True School Sports because you know on one side you had uh, Michael Fox. We hadn't seen him since the very controversial robbery last year, the loss where he lost to Gabriel Maestre, and there was a whole scandal with the WBA and the judges, and it was a crazy thing. So there was obviously a lot, you know, of things to look forward to for Michael Fox because Michael Fox, he. In my opinion, I thought he boxed like the fight of his life against Gabriel Maestro. One of the best performances of his boxing career to date. So you have him on one side. Then on the other side, you have, you know, the meme machine, Kavaluskis, who comes in with his amateur pedigree. You know, I believe he was a bronze medalist at the World Championships. Um, he was, all, you know, also, he's he stopped guys like David Avenician. He, he, he's beaten, you know, um, Juan Carlos Abreu. Uh, he had good competitive fights with Terrence Crawford and Virgil Ortiz. Beat Michael Zuski. Had to draw Ray Robinson. So he's, he's had a very up and down career. But one thing about Mimi Shikavaluska is, is we always know that he's a tough out for anybody in the division. So it was a good fight just considering where they both were at this stage of their careers. And, um, you know, it started off really well um, as far as excitement goes. Uh, Kavaluska got out to does what he normally does because Kavaluska, he's always been one of these fighters that, that's a bit of a front runner. You know, he's always explosive early and he'll fade later on. That's why... When you look at uh, the fights with Crawford, you know, um, he he got stopped late. He got stopped later on in the fight, but had success early. Uh, same thing with Virgil. Had a lot of success early, got stopped in the eighth round. So um, same thing here. You know, he he, he drops and hurts Michael Fox three to, uh, 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 twice in the third round. Drops him twice in the third round. And really takes, takes him to those deep, dark, uncomfortable places we talk about here on True School Sports. And the only surprising thing was that he didn't get him out of there because he was hitting him basically everything he threw in the third round. So Fox showed some grit, some gumption, some veteran savvy to stay in there through the third round. And then, you know, pretty much Kavaluskis, uh outworked him and, and, and continued to win rounds for the most part. But it was a pretty boring fight after the like fifth round. Uh, Kavaluskis won. Uh, failed, fa really failed to, to to put that exclamation point on the fight and, and land flush punches as the fight progressed in the towards the back half of the fight. But you know, nonetheless, a much needed victory in the career of Mean Machine Kavaluskis because you know um, coming into the fight he was uh, he was one two and one coming into the fight, um, and now with the win. He 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 kind of like in a sense reestablishes establishes his level in the welterweight division. You know, yeah, he hasn't been able to beat the Crawfords and the Virgil Ortizes, but he can beat the Michael Zuskis and the David Avenicians and the Michael Foxes of the world. If you if you're on that tier, you're not gonna beat him. You know, you gotta be on that elite creme la creme top shelf tier to beat Kavaluskis. So I'm disappointed a little bit with Michael Fox's performance because. His third straight loss. He's lost to Lucas Santa Maria. He has the controversial loss to Gabriel Maestre on his resume. And now this. But considering what he did against Maestre, I just didn't like the fact. I didn't like uh, the performance in this fight. You know, he, he left a lot to be desired. And, you know, at this point, he's going to be used as an opponent because that's what he's boxing like. That's what he's fighting like. Uh, I won't count Maestre against because I, I think he won the fight. But I am going to count, obviously, Santa Maria and obviously um, this fight against uh, Kavaluskis. So um, it's going to be. B sides against you know upcoming opposition for him for the rest of his career until until he can string together some some wins and that's just that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. But um, as far as Kyle Lewis is, is concerned, what's next for him? You know I think there's a lot of options. I, I believe he signed PBC now, so there's like really in my opinion there's about two to three options for him right now as it stands. The only governing body that uh, Kyle Lewis is ranked in is the WBC. He, he's currently ranked number ten. In the WBC, so um, you, the number eight contender in the WBC is Cody Crowley. I can see that fight being a thing on an undercard for PBC. And also, uh, you got Mario Barrios, which I think would be a good fight, on a level fight. 
You got Rashidi Ellis who's 14. So you got I, I like all three of those fights. Uh Ellis, Barrios, Crowley, um, Jerron Ennis. I I mean, I was just telling my dad last night. I said, Pops, don't don't be surprised if in the next one or two fights, the next six to eighteen months, you see Kyle Lutzkis wind up being a Jerron Ennis opponent because the reality is uh they're gonna wanna jump some more hype for Jerron Ennis. He's going to need opponents with credibility. And if he can't get the Spence and the Crawfords and the Virgils in the ring, then he's going to have to start looking at that second tier. And if you can't get Thurman, okay, then you guys look past that. And then they look at the guys like Cody Crowley. And a guy like Kavluskis, a guy like Kavluskis is perfect because he's mixed it up with all levels of well weight, the elites, the mid-tiers, the, you know, all levels. And he's a good fighter, good amateur background, you know, uh, won a medal in the, in the, in the, in the amateur world championships when, when he was an amateur. Um, he can punch. He's a guy with credibility. He's hurt Virgil. He's hurt Crawford. And he showed himself to give a good account of himself against the elite. So it would be a, a, a true measuring stick fight for Jerron Ennis if the fight was to get made. So don't be surprised if that gets made. But, you know, I'll also, if, if we're looking at what would be the most competitive fight on the, out of the fights, I would like to see Kyle Lucas against maybe Mario Barrios. You know, Mario Barrios is a guy who likes to sit there and bang. Um, he, you know, he's, he's a guy that, has really been fighting the who's who of boxing recently from Tank Davis to Keith Thurman to, you know, all these kinds of guys. Uh, before that, Ryan Carl went in a really good fight. So I, I think that'd be a really good fight, Barrios versus Kavaluskas. If not that, I think if you want to see where Rashidi Ellis is truly at, because a lot of people have questions about Rashidi Ellis and, and how good he truly is, I think Kavaluskas is the measuring stick. He's the, he's the measuring stick for a lot of fighters in the wealth weight division because of you know, the fact that he's he's given good accounts of himself at, at, at elite level, but he's fallen a little short. Um, but he can punch. He can box. There, there, there's, there's a lot of experience there with him. So it's always a good measuring set when you fight the Mean Machine. Aside from PBC fight, I would also like to see Mean Machine fight uh, Michael McKinson. That'd be a good fight. Um, obviously, McKinson get a chance against him. Uh, Pistol Pete Dobson, who's fighting at 54. If, if he wants to come back to 47, this would be a good fight for Pete Dobson. If not Pete Dobson, then I would like to see Harold Calderon get a shot. You know, because Harold Calderon saying he wants to um, get these big fights. If Harold Calderon could show his level against a guy like Kyle Luskis, then it would, it would go a long way in his career. But I'm, I'm rambling right now. Uh, good performance with Me Machine. Way to get back into the uh, into the fold of the welterweight division. And with the win. So, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about Mean Machine's performance. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding, from Daniels. Until next time, take your ass. Thank you for watching True School Sports. No, follow this kid. Oh. You know, he's a true, uh, you know, it's a young, true, uh, passionate uh, uh, person who follows boxing. He, 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 he wakes up thinking about boxing and he goes to sleep thinking about boxing. This is, so, this is true. This is good true. kid, good man, and looking forward to seeing him uh, everywhere yeah. in the boxing world. Hey, man, if you ain't subscribed to True School Sports, you're fucking up, man. Make sure you subscribe, bro. Fucking up big time. Make sure, man. <laughs>